Hi everyone, today we're going to make this medieval scribe slope from craft board on the Cricut Maker. You can make it as plain or as detailed as you like. And I like to put a ledge at the bottom so that the scrolls and paperwork doesn't fall off. If you've made the chair and desk and you like these detail layers, we can replicate that on the side of the desk. And I use two layers of craft board for the plane and one for the detail. So this is three layers thick. And you'll need a left and a right slope. The back piece is also three layers and I'm going to use tacky glue on each layer and then press them under my stainless steel bench block while they dry. Next, we're going to glue the slopes and as I said earlier, just make sure you've got a left and a right sort of top detail layer if you're going to use the detail layer. And again, glue them with tacky glue and press them. And then here I accidentally glued the wrong side of the detail layer so I've left this in just so that you can see we do make mistakes and it's easy to fix them. I've just realised it's not going to go on the right way round so I just simply wipe the glue off. I could recut this um, and if I was going to be selling this piece I would recut it but this is just for the tutorial and there is a layer of glue on it it won't take the stain as well, but this is okay. Um, if I was really bothered, I'd have recut this piece. But I just dry the glue off as much as I can, turn it over um, and glue the correct side now. And you'll see in the finished one, actually, when I did stain it, it didn't seem to make too much of a difference, so it wasn't too horrific. So these pieces are for the ledge at the bottom. I cut five, but in the end I only used three. I thought that five looked a little chunky. So again, we just glue and press these. And now we're going to make the top of the slope. And you've got three pieces here that are exactly the same width, but they're not all the same length. They're gradient in length. And you can see there, you've got a short, a medium, and a tall. And we've done a gradient so that when you put the side piece on, it actually follows the same diagonal and doesn't have a gap there. And then we want it to go up straighter at the back. That was the prototype. We've changed the dimension slightly for the actual SVG now. So line them up so that you've got those edges all on a diagonal. as if it was sitting on the bench. And then the top edge there, you just want to slightly angle it on the bench so that when the back piece glues up against it, you've got sort of more of a thicker edge. When you play around with this, it'll become easier to see. So start with the smallest piece, put the glue on that, Now 
We want to work fairly quickly here so that all the pieces still move and they don't set before we're ready for them. So line up the sides and the bottom. Keep it flat on one side and then you've got the gradient at the top. And then we're going to quickly put that on to the next piece. So glue the back of the middle piece now. And again, make sure the bottom is flat at the moment so that the sides are level and the top has the gradient. If when you come to glue the back piece on, there's a, too much of a leading edge and it, it doesn't go flush on the edge that I'm pointing at now, you can lightly sand that to get in the exact right angle that you need when you're gluing the back on. So we're going to leave those to dry now and press them while they dry and then we'll come back and assemble it. Okay, so they're now dry. It's a very, very quick build. Make sure you've got the slope the right way so the gradient is on the sort of left-hand edge there and now the right-hand edge as we're looking at it. It's so that when you put the side piece on, you can see that the gradient is at the front there and continues the slope. So we're going to glue the two sides on. So when you've got the sides on and you're happy that they're perpendicular, we need to glue the back on. And this is where you'll see when the back goes on, whether you need to sand anything off of that top leading edge. And the back will fit exactly edge to edge with the sides. So if you're happy with the fit, we put glue on the three top edges there. I didn't need to sand anything off for this one. And unfortunately, most of this is off camera because I was using my phone and not my usual setup, as you'll know from all the technical problems I had this week. So basically glue it on squarely onto the back and so that the sides meet the edges of the back and the top is nicely fitted. And if there's any glue in that gap, use a cocktail stick to remove it. and leave that to dry. So now all we have to do is fit the bottom ledge and you could put that anywhere you like. It doesn't have to go flush with the bottom. You could have it slightly further up. So have a play around with it. I actually liked mine flush with the bottom so that's where I'm going to glue mine.
So there we have the ledge glued on and that's basically it. It's a quite simple, nicely straightforward file. And you could even slightly shrink the SVG down and maybe make it into a cookbook stand for a country kitchen. As usual, I've stained this with my walnut stain and given it a coat of matte varnish. Watch out for a future video where I'll be showing you how I made these scrolls and giving you the PNG artwork so you can make them at home too. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon.